everybody how you doing today it's Carolyn and I'm a little bit bored and sort of trying to avoid getting out of bed because <laughs> it's 9 57 and I've been awake since like 7 30 but I just kind of don't want to get up yet so I'm doing a little work on the family tree and I want to show you in family search something that you can do um, if you want to if you are tired of your own research if you've hit a brick wall but you still want to be working in genealogical ways and maybe picking up new skills, sharpening the skills that you have, I've got something for you. This is, um, let me actually back it up. Okay, so this is my phone, wait, sorry. This is my phone with the catfish, the cat-faced fish, which I totally freaking love. And um, so I'm going up to my family history window. It's got uh, all my family history apps in it. And the family tree app is the family search app. And I like it best for working on family search because it's a quicker way to get a lot of things done. Um, there are a lot of problems, I think, with the PC interface with the, or maybe just the web-based interface. And so this does away with a lot of them. VineLink, by the way, is, is a way of looking up um, people who are being held in uh, state or, I believe, federal also custody. Um, so you can look for folks who are in jail. Tools is a, an app for um, accessing stuff for church. My Heritage is obviously my heritage. And background check been verified is been verified. And that's how you can look people up who are either alive or recently deceased and find out things like birth dates and um, where they're living now and the nexus of their relationships with relatives and um, other people, but, but certainly with relatives. But family tree is what we want. So here I go. I'm tapping on it. And it immediately brings up my family tree. And that's great. That's fine. That's where I want to be. So the little spyglass will let you search out any person in the tree, either by their family search ID number or by name and a whole list of possible facts like gender, uh, birthplace, birth date, death place, death date, all that kind of stuff. Relationships, parents' names, spouses' names, children, all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to the spyglass and I've been working this one name. Yesterday, I thought, oh, I'm just going to do this a little bit. And what kind of name am I going to go for? Well, Marcus is a name that occurs in my dad's side a lot. And then Jones is a pretty common last name. So I thought, well, I'll just, I'll just work on some Marcus Joneses and we'll see what happens. So I'm entering Marcus Jones and male. I'm not putting in any other limiters and look at what it pulls up. This is so bonkers. I hit find. There are 2 million of people with the last name Jones in the shared family tree. You can see how many are where. We've got half of those people are in the United States. And then there's a bunch like another quarter in England and another eighth in, in Wales. That's pretty cool. So what do we got? First person, this is what I do. I just go to the first Marcus Jones and I start poking around. So Marcus Preston Jones, I'm gonna tap on his little blue face and it brings up his profile. And look at there, there are hints for him. The way that I can tell is that there is a little blue bubble with a white outline and scribble of a document next to his blue face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work these hints and we'll see what applies to him and what doesn't. But you can see that there's no birthplace and no death place. Maybe we'll find that. Maybe we'll find some other stuff. We can look here real quick. He's got one spouse with a bunch of kids and then he's got a second spouse. Daniel Joseph, Daniel Joseph. Right there, there's something to fix. I want to look at Daniel Joseph Jones here. See, he's listed here with no mom, but then he's also listed in the list with the other kids. So I'm looking at the 
ID number G7RS, G7RS, G1N, G1N. It's the same version of Daniel Joseph Jones. There's not a duplicate there. All I have to do is nick out the unknown spouse version of Daniel Joseph Jones and Marcus Preston, Preston Jones and his wife and kids are all listed up like they're supposed to be. How do you do that? Little pencil. The little pencil at the end of Daniel Joseph Jones line, I tap on, and it brings up that there is dad, but it doesn't show that there's mom, and that's the one that we want to get rid of. We, we want him to be attached to both his parents, not to just one. So all you do is hit the remove, and then you can see a graphic of what it is. You're separating him from just his dad in this just his dad version that doesn't separate him from the relationship with his dad and his mom those are considered two sets of relationships and I just tap in the box on I have reviewed I explain that this is a duplicate relationship and then I remove now, all of his kids are lined up under the one spouse, which is how they were. Because look, Daniel is in the middle of a run of children. And unless Marcus Pre uh, Preston Jones stepped out, this is all legit, right? And it looks pretty well worked because we've got birth and death dates and stuff like that. So anyway, here we go. I'm going to look at the hints for Marcus Preston Jones and see if any of them are applicable to him. So I'm tapping on the little blue dot and here we've got terrible spelling of Marcus Preston Jones. And okay, so Fincastle and Bodator. Okay, so here we go. So it's the same birthday. It's the military re re uh, registration, draft registration. And Luvana Jones. We don't know who Luvana Jones is. I don't see his mom listed. Let's go see if he has a mom. I'm going to backwards arrow out of here and leave. And backwards arrow again. Parents. We don't have parents for Marcus. Sources. The earliest thing we have is a marriage certificate. I'm going to take a look at it. See if it lists his parents. Yeah, see? So somebody worked this. You see what happened? Somebody worked this marriage certificate and didn't bother to add Marcus's parents. Duh. And his mom is Luvina Dunbar, which would be Luvana Jones, because it's just a little spelling discrepancy between the two. And, of course, her married name would be Jones. So let's add his parents. So we're going to add Ollie Preston Jones. We look and see there is no Ollie Preston Jones. Richard Ollie was born in 43, and that's the age of Marcus's children, so it couldn't be the dad. So we're adding a new person, Ollie Preston Jones, continue. He must be deceased because of the age, and we're adding the person. Now we're going to attach that record and move on. Here's mom, Luvina Dunbar. We're going to add her. There is no Luvina Dunbar. It's interesting that he, um, Marcus married a Dunbar, so there's a little cousin action going on here. So we're going to say no match. There's no match to Luvina in the tree as it, as it attaches to him. We're going to add her. Continue. She's obviously deceased, and we're going to go continue and add. Basically saying a lot of yeses. Going to the bottom and saying attach. Now the record is attached to her. We have evidence to prove that this is how it works. And we're done. So now we can go back to the military draft record. Now the way the military draft records work basically was if the guy who was being, who was being examined for draft was married, he would provide his wife's name as next of kin. But if he wasn't married, he might provide a sibling's name, he might provide dad's name, or he might provide mom's name. That's why my suspicions, my hackles immediately went up when I saw the name Luvana 
Jones because I thought, well, that sounds like it would be a mom and because he's not married yet and his wife's name is not Luvana. So, um, so it's Luvana or Luvina, we're not sure, but anyway, let's take a look. We're going back to the misspelled Marcus Preston Jones because Marcus is misspelled. It's either misspelled on the original record or it is actually a handwriting issue. So I'm going to stick with Luvina because that record is uh, potentially more solid. But here we go. Compare. All right, so now we've got Finn Castle of Virginia as his birthplace. And he would have said to the person taking the draft information, the draft card information, he would have said, well, I was born in Finn Castle. So that's a town rather than a county probably. And the way that we add that Finn Castle, Virginia over is we tap on the pencil next to birth in the right hand column. Your pencil is your friend. And all you have to do, you see the blue apply? All you have to do is hit apply. Bam. It plugs that information right in. And then by tapping on the date of birth, it provides with the calendar next to it, the correct format for family search. So I hit that. And then the same thing with the birthplace. Tap on it and it's going to say Finn Castle. And we know that the family is from Bodotort because there are other things going on there that, that say Bodotort. So Finn Castle, Bodotort, Virginia, United States. Now, if you didn't pick that up in looking, I just tend to retain the stuff when I'm looking. Um, see, he was buried in Bodotort County. And I, I may be mispronouncing that. And if I am, I, I apologize to all the Virginians and all the people who've been to Virginia. But um, this is uh, it's something that I tend to re just retain the visual. So I knew that it was right. Now we're going to add over from the same record the draft registration information and is reg we residents at the time of the military draft registration. I can't add or change the data that's being added over. Um, so it just has to go over as it is. And then we go to the bottom, say yes, attach. And now we've got the other one, which is Luvana Jones, right? And it's Luvina Dunbar, Bar. it's mom. So we're just gonna add that to her, attach it. Now there's another record establishing her. Now we're gonna go to the genealogy uh, bank obituaries and it's him again, it's his death. He was living in Roanoke, so probably he died in Roanoke, Virginia, but I'm not sure about that. So I'm just adding over the obituary information. I'm not making any changes here at the death with the death place. It would be safe to put in Virginia, but I'm not even putting in that. I'm gonna see if another record provides it for me. And then we have Marcus P. Jones in the 1930 census with a mom of Lubana instead of Luvana, yet another, it was heard wrong or something like that and Ollie Jones's dad, and a couple of siblings. So groovy. Um, he's white, okay, we see that. So let's go ahead and compare. Here's Marcus P, born in 1920 or so, in Amsterdam, a different town, but still in the same county. Adding it, things line up here, see? Ollie Jones, Lubana, Luvina, Luvana, whatever and then siblings. So we're going to go ahead and add. We're going to Ollie. And it's Ollie Preston and we're going to add these to him that gives him more context which is good. So now I'm beginning to think that two records say Lubana or Luvana. Only one says Luvina. It's probable that her name is Luvana with an A. So I'm going to go ahead and change that. But that can always be changed. If it's wrong it can be corrected. There will be future records to substantiate her life. Attach it. Now we've got a brother, Roscoe. Roscoe does not exist in the family tree grouping within this part of the family tree yet, so I'm going to say no match. We're going to continue. He was born, as you can see, in 1914 in Virginia, so chances are very good he is deceased. We're going to add a comma, and that brings in the United States, so the format is good. Continue. Now we're going to hit add this person. It's possible 
Roscoe already exists in another part of the tree, and we're going to be able to lock him in. It's also possible he doesn't. So let's see what happens. Add this person. Didn't bring up any possible duplicates, so we're just adding him in as a new person in the tree. Now, there was one other person here, Blanche. Her relationship to the family is unknown or unclear. For the moment, um, I'm going to try to add her and see what happens. So, add new person or find match. Not here yet in the tree. No match. Now, because it says unknown, it doesn't state that she is the child of either Ollie or Luvina, right? Or Luvana. So that means the tree is asking me, well, who is she related to? Give me at least one person she's related to from this whole list of the tree so far. So what I can do is this. If I say none of the above and I try to add her by hitting continue and deceased because it's 1914 and the comma to get the United States, if I hit continue, one of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to pull up a duplicate and it's going to add this record to her, that duplicate person or, or maybe not duplicate but original person or it's going to say you can't add this person she has no relationships. So they give me some choices. Sussex, no, wrong county. No idea whether that's correct or not. Richmond, wrong county. You start scrolling down there's no telling which one of these people is correct or not correct. Their dates are that are bad. There's all kinds of stuff that's no good. So I'm going to say no match and we'll see what Family Search says to us about it. Known relationships found. You cannot add this person because there are no relationships in Family Tree. This is part of what helps us to keep from adding people willy nilly to the tree and creating incorrect relationships. So I'm cool with that. I'm backing out. And what I leave this with, or yeah, how I leave this record is this particular person isn't attached to anybody yet. There's no relationship there yet. Done. Leave. Yes. Now that was the 1930, right? Here. You can see how it's left on Marcus Preston Jones under his sources. It shows that there's somebody who hasn't been attached yet and you need to review those attachments and make a correction. It also allows you to actually look at the census itself. and This is the way to determine whether or not Blanche is a birth child of Marcus Preston Jones or whether she's a niece or something like that. So here's what we do. We take a look at, actually it would be a sister. Be a, is she a sister or a cousin? So we tap on not the little dotted line box, but above it on Marcus P. Jones, 1930, somewhere in that strip of information. Tap on it, and it brings up the ability to review the attachments that we just made and to view the image that is the page of the 1930 census. So I'm viewing the image. It's going to take a second to pull up. We're looking for Blanche Jones. Jones, Blanche, she's a rumor. She's a rumor with the family. She's probably Ollie's niece, but we don't have any evidence of that. So I can't really act on that. I can't construct anything. What I can do is X out of here at the top and arrow back and just leave it there. It's going to be hanging there like this saying review attachments until the answer comes and that's cool. So now we've worked all the hints that are there for Marcus so let's work on his parents for a minute. Maybe we can take him backwards, maybe we can hook him into the tree. Let's look at Ollie Preston Jones first and let's see if there's anything there for him. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to clean up the format, add the United States to him. I'm going to do the same for his spouse. Just little picky things like this. They make the tree look better. 
they pass the time, what can I say? So what's attached to Ollie? Sources. We've got the 1930 census. He was born in 1880. That means there should be a 1900, a 1910, and a 1920 for him. So there should probably also be World War I draft registration information for Ollie because he's of the right age to have been required to register. So all we have to do is this. Search. Go to the triple dots in the upper right hand corner. Tap on it. Search records. Now you can search records because I'm me. I can search records in Family Search or Ancestry and, um, and that's pretty cool. And I'm going to choose Ancestry because the Ancestry records are easier to look at. Family Search does not pull everything up in as clean a way and it just makes me mad. So I'm tapping on Ancestry.com. I'm, and it says, okay, get ready. We're taking you outside into your browser. I'm like groovy. Search. So let's see what we have. Ollie Preston Jones, marriage records. Take a look. Lavina Dunbar, that was Marcus. Okay, so we're going to back out of there. We've already got that record. Back arrow it down at the bottom of the screen. There we go. Now, we've got the 1930 census, right? Same thing. 1930. We added that already, right? So we want to take a look, though. Blanche is listed as a rumor. And I'm not doing a lot of, you know, well, I'm going to look on the page before and the page after and try and figure out where the whole Jones family was. Jones is a common name. I'm doing bare minimum on this to just do a little improvement on the tree. I'm not selling my soul. Willie, nope. Ollie, not in Texas. Ollie P. Jones. Ollie Preston Jones. Let's look and see if this U.S. A. A find a grave is in fact him. Colorado. Mm. Father, mother, spouse, William. Nope. I'm not liking that. Let's look at Preston Jones, Bedford, Preston Jones, Ollie Jones, Ollie Jones. But I'm looking at all of these different locations. And they're not making a whole lot of sense to me. So I'm just leaving it behind. I've done what I can here. So that's cool. Um, the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to look at Luvana real quick. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'll search records on Ancestry. Just see what pulls. Luvana Dosi Jones. Luvina Dunbar. Lavinia Jones, but it's Amherst. There are all these different Luvania Dunbar. Let's look at that and see what that says. Ollie Jones, Marcus. Pr so this says her name is Luvania. And here's the 1950 census for her saying her name is Lorana. Oh my gosh, you guys, the indexing. It's tragic. Let's look at the 1950 census and see if this is her by any chance. She's in Fincastle and she is the mother who is okay, this record applies to her but I have no way of taking it over. I can't just transfer it over from Ancestry to Family Search. I'd only be able to do that if I attached it to her in an Ancestry tree and then transferred between two profiles. But what's good to know is that it's probably Luvana. Let's take a look at the document itself. And yes, I spend hours doing this, you guys, with the news on in the background and the cats cleaning each other and fighting. Yeah, that's not Lurana. That's Luvana. So this tells us a couple of things. Her name is Lurana. Or, excuse me, that her name is Luvana for one thing. And the other thing that it tells me, and that's just a handwriting issue, the other thing that it tells me is that her husband died before 1950. 
So I can back out of here. I can go over to here and I'm going to, I've got a cat pestering me. Hang on, sorry. Luvana Dunbar, continue, save. She died after 1950. She was living at Fincastle. That's good to know. And so I'm gonna put in a note for her down in, where are the notes? I'll say residence. Under residence, where the heck is residence? There. 1950. Fincastle. Go to tour Virginia. And I'm going to say that this is per 1950 census. She is widowed and living with son Marcus and his family. Groovy. That gives us a little something. Now spouse wise, we can go to Ollie Preston and we can say that he was date of death before 1950. It might provoke some kind of a hint. Not really sure how well it works over here. And um, we're going to say Virginia. Can't say that he died in Fincastle. Have no idea really, but we do know that he was most likely in Virginia. The family was in Virginia and stayed there. And I'm going to say surmised from Widow's presence in Son Marcus's home in Finn Castle. VA nineteen fifty census. Shows move on as being widowed. Now I've got a breadcrumb trail, right? I'm not going to work on this again because these people are not related to me. Chances are very good, but this at least leaves somebody with some information, right? And I can always check to see if these people are related to me, and this is how I'll go up to the triple dots. View my relationship? Nope, I'm not related to these people. I don't seem to have Joneses. So I've done some work on the Joneses, so now let's go ahead and look at Roscoe. Is there any hint for him? No. Let's take a quickie look. Search records, ancestry, search. Let's see if it pulls anything other than that 30 census for him. Here's the 30 census for him in Amsterdam. Get back out of here. Idaho, Missouri, all kinds of places. Absolutely no idea whether any of these records apply. And if I don't know they apply, I don't touch them. So back arrow out. I'm back here, so I'm just leaving it like it is. And that's it. And then I just want to find another Marcus, so what do I do? I go to the spyglass. I go to first name Marcus. I go to the next Jones. I go to mail. I hit find. Pulls up the same thing. And I go to the next person. And that's what I do. That's all I do. And this Marcus Jones doesn't have any hints, but we can look at his sources. 
It's only the one source. We can look at his parents, see if there are any good sources. There's only the one source. We can look at his spouse. Likely that's her married name, not her maiden name, but looks like that's all there is. Start to look at the children. Are there any records for the kids? Robert? Marcus? We looked at you. Julia? Annie? Nope. Nothing I can really do here. And this is a quick and dirty, so I'm just going back to the same thing. Marcus? Jones? Male? Find? Marcus and Sophie? Nope. Already went there. Maybe, maybe there's something here, so now I go to the next one. There are hints to work. And so it goes. This is what I do. This is what I do. And I highly recommend it if you're reasonably comfortable with family search and you're thorough because you really have to look at things in order to make sure that you're not creating messes in families that don't belong to you. This is about augmenting and improving the family search tree. So I hope that that was educational and refreshing. And I know that sometimes I can be a bit of a fire hydrant and then I ask you to have a drink of water. Um, I hope that this wasn't too much at once that way. And I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.